Hi everyone, Andrew here for Abley Reviews, and we're going through another one of our ship builds. This one is the Crate Mark II, or the Crate MK <laughs> Two Lines. Uh, so, Crate Mark II. Sorry, that's silly. Uh, I think it's a really cool ship. It kind of has an interesting sort of vibe to it, where the cockpit is actually under it. So you kind of have this froggy kind of look here in the front, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I really like mine. I would say if you were to ask me what my my daily driver is, uh, it's this. It's the, it's the Crate Mark II. It's a, a really fun ship. It's incredibly versatile, and it, and it really can just do some cool stuff. So let's pop in and kind of talk about what mine um, has to offer. So there's a few things. If we go to our outfitting, the way I sort of set it up is, is pretty standard for me. I like the beam laser. I gave it the best in class beam laser I could on a gimbal. Uh, so you can see these three hard points in the class three. So it has a total of five. Uh, and then we get into the multi-cannon. Um, I really like having that, that balance of beam lasers and then multi-cannons. So this thing has a total of five. I split them into three beams uh, and then two, two sort of kinetic rounds. And that's why you see the multi-cannons here. And, and these are all just sort of set up as they are. I think having the, the chain guns kind of next to you look really cool, especially if you can kind of look under that chain gun on my right here my uh, cockpit sits right there. So when you call those out, they kind of show up right by your head and it looks really cool. And then of course the beam lasers are on top. Uh, pretty cool look if you ask me. When you get into our utility mounts, no surprise here if you've seen some of the other videos, I really do like shield boosters. I think, um, I think they're, the, they're, they're the bee's knees, if you will. And the reasoning for that, great segue, is because of the reactive surface composite armor that I choose. Uh, basically, um, again, it, it gives you that hull boost, it gives you that kinetic resistance, that explosive resistance, but it is deficient with thermal resistance. So making sure my shields can kind of withstand some of that extra stuff, I think is important. From there, top tier power plant for the class. Uh, thrusters, same thing, class six, I go for class six. Thrusters, frame shift drive, you wanna be able to get as far as you can. Uh, so 5A, life support, I want that 25 minutes. I always think that's important. Power distributor, all this should be uh, well known to any of you that have seen my prior videos, but you can see here again, um, power distribution at class, if the class is seven, we go for a class seven thing, and then we go for the best that we can get, which is 7A without engineering. Uh, sensors is the 6A, you wanna be able to see everywhere, and then that standard fuel tank that comes with every ship. So this one has a 32 uh, ton fuel capacity. Uh, we get down into our optional internals. This is where I think you can start to have the most fun and really have your signature for your ship. Uh, for me, it is the shield generator, of course, in that top tier slot of uh, class six. And then I am a big fan, huge fan of the fighter hangar. I think it's a key thing to have. Um, I love having a friend pop in with me and I love having an NPC fighter. I've had the same fighter with me this entire time and she is fantastic. So I wanna make sure she can roll with me. And that's why I really like this crate. It can do all of the things that my Fertilands can do, that my Anaconda sort of, it can kind of touch on the Anaconda stuff. It is just a great all-rounder. And that again is why it's my daily driver. It does it all and it does it all really well. It can jump, it can fight, I can pull out another ship. Um, I, For my play style, I, I adore this ship. Like I said, it's the one I take, go get the groceries. From there, you have the hull reinforcement. So my two class five slots are gonna be hull reinforcements. I just wanna make sure we're withstanding whatever we can as best we can with these non-engineered items. And then finally, you have uh, the only one class four slot. And for me, it's a module reinforcement package. I just wanna make sure everybody can hold on just a little bit longer. We get into the shield cell bank. Uh, it's always really important to me to kind of incorporate these in some of my uh, more, I guess, more active ships. So that's why I have the shield cell bank. Uh, if my shields start to get down, I want to take care of it. And I want to have that variety in this ship because this is kind of my all-rounder. I like it to have a little bit of everything from all of my other ships that I use. So it needs to have fighters. It needs to have lasers. It needs to have cannons. And it needs to have a shield cell bank. Um, and that's why I think I it even hedges me out when I, when I sort of choose between my fertile lance and my crate, my crate will probably get chosen more times than none because it just has more bells um, to the whistles that exist in the, uh, the Fertile Lands. Uh, then of course, you need to have your life preserver. That's that fuel scoop. I encourage all of you to have a fuel scoop. 
even if you don't think you need it, the second you don't think you need it, that's when you need it. Uh, advanced docking computer, as I've said before, I just adore watching it go. Plus, you get all that classical music. Who doesn't want that? Uh, Super Cruise Assist, going straight just isn't for me. I like to uh, make sure the, uh, the ship can take care of those straight paths so I can focus on other things. And then Advanced Planetary Approach Suite, that comes with all the ships, so we won't worry too much about that. Uh, but we get to our vehicle bays. Oh, look at this. Surprise, surprise. It's the exact ship and all my other ones. Uh, the I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the GU-97. It's got the beam lasers that are gimbaled and the heat sink. And I do the same thing for the other one. So we have these two slots here. I like gimbaled weapons. I just do. Uh, and I cannot lie, um, but I want my fighters to have them too, or if I'm going to pop into it, I want to use it. These are essentially very maneuverable, very, very big pieces of glass that can do some pretty good damage really quickly. So I love to send out a fighter and use these things. Overall, I think this is a super cool ship. Uh, it really sort of looks unique to me. It has it has all the sort of the, the whistles that I would want from a space ship. So it, it checks the box. And it even kind of looks like a fighter. Right, you sort of look here, it's got these sharp edges, this sort of cool look inside. I, I, I think this is a neat ship, and, and I love these big vents, these exhaust ports, all this stuff here. And look at these thrusters. Just a, just a cool, 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 cool ship. Uh, so one of the nice things about sort of these mid-tier ships uh, is the modules. And let's, uh, let's go a little bit bigger for you. There we are. Uh, these modules, I'm, you can actually see my output and my usage are at 100. If you actually did the math and looked at it, it's like 100 point something. And that's why you see that red line. When I turn this bad boy on, only one thing really ends up getting turned off, which is fantastic. And it's usually, um, I think the docking computer uh, in the top fours, that usually is what get knocked out or one of these other two. Not a big deal to me. Everything else just works. So it really doesn't require a lot of priority management. Now, I still do some priority management, right? Thrusters, all those things that are important. And I basically said, hey, if it's in the beam lasers, if it's weapons, I'm running away if we're really hitting that sort of problem. So who cares if those things go out? Shield boosters, same deal. Basically my threes. And then uh, once the threes are gone, there's still one four. It's that docking computer. Who cares? Uh, same thing for that super cruise assist. If these things go out, not a big deal. We just want to be able to escape before all the power is cut off. Uh, so another really easy one to manage, and I love that about this ship. It just works. It's just easy to use. And then, of course, um, I also have my, my fighters here. We get 16 fighters in this ship. 16 of them. So there's more than enough uh, to have the fun and, and get out there and have a good time. I really hope this was helpful. Uh, as always... I don't know what I don't know about this game. So if you have suggestions uh, about how I could better optimize my ship, please share them. I think that would be fantastic. I think that's the coolest thing about um, putting these videos out is I'm always getting a really great comment from somebody saying, hey, I didn't know this, or hey, you should try this. So please share those things um, so that way I and anybody else that sees that comment can learn from you. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.